Hey everyone, my name is Adam from AZ Tech, and today we have a review on a 4K TV. This is the TCL S405. TV I picked up at Best Buy for $349.99. Uh, occasionally it'll go on sale for $329 and uh, I've seen it as much as about 379 so it's a pretty decently priced TV for the feature set that it has this is 4k uh, it's got three HDMI inputs all available inputs can be 4k 60 Hertz I'll go into a little bit more depth of that later and uh, it does also do HDR this is also a smart TV it's a Roku TV so it has built-in Wi-Fi and it runs the Roku format this is where the TV will turn on to and you have all these different icons here so if you take a look here this is my computer screen then this is my gaming PC and then my PlayStation if you see that it'll actually hover over it it'll actually show you a live image of what it's on you can actually see that mouse moving in that little menu I don't know if you guys are able to see that it's up on that blue top right corner right now and yeah you can see the white cursor moving around so that is a live feed uh, which is a pretty neat thing I actually I really really like that feature um, you can also uh, move these icons and change them however you feel that you want to lay them out this is the way I have mine laid out but if you do want to change them you would hit the uh, asteroid mark which is on your remote mm -hmm. as options and you can rate the app you can move the channel around you can remove it or uninstall it uh, feedback and then close but yeah, you can move those around however you feel. And once again, this is a smart TV, so it uses the Roku TV format. Uh, every manufacturer has their own, um, a lot of them have their own smart TV format. LG has its own, and Sony, and so on and so forth, along with Samsung. This one is a more universal, um, universal set smart hub. And what this does is a lot of other TV manufacturers can use this. The Roku is a very easy to use, low, low system resource smart hub system and it works just so smooth and it's so fluid and everything about it, I love it. I've used other smart TVs and they're not very fluid, they're very uh, glitchy and laggy and stuff just doesn't work right or the TVs will freeze. I've never really experienced any freezing on this TV. I've had it for almost three months now and this TV has performed flawlessly with the Roku and all other aspects of this TV as well have, have worked flawlessly so it's a pretty neat feature I like it you can install whatever apps that you want if you take a look here I got a uh, Hulu and Sling TV that's uh, streaming TV there uh, this is Twitch and YouTube and Amazon Prime a lot of your built-in radio apps are here with TuneIn and Slacker and iHeart and Pandora um, you got some, oh, the Roku Media Player. This is so you can hook up a USB stick. So you pop in your USB stick into the back of the TV, and then you can play uh, slideshows of your pictures or your music or your movies or videos that you have downloaded onto a USB hard drive or a USB stick. It's a pretty neat feature as well. Um, if you want to look for more apps, you would slide over and then go down to the settings feature, or sorry, streaming channels. And then from in here, you can search for other ones that you want or ones that just have 4K content. So these are the ones that will display 4K streaming. And this will display a 4K image with 4K if it has it available. So if Netflix has a 4K movie available, this will stream in 4K. Now, your internet has to be able to handle it. If you have a slow internet, it's going to automatically adjust to it and only give you the highest resolution that it can give you based on your internet speed. So that is a big uh, contributing factor is your internet speed. But these are 4K capable apps. Amazon Prime, Netflix, Vudu, and YouTube are your main ones that do that. And then, yeah, you can search for other uh, free ones. There's also paid apps in here if you have DirecTV. And then you also have the app for DirecTV. You can download that, which you can see there in the uh, bottom portion of the screen under most popular. Those are paid, I believe. Yeah, you have to sign into your account, and then you'll be able to access all the information as well. But there are also paid apps that you can buy individually. 
Um, let's go ahead, let's back out of here. Let's see if I can find you one real quick. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything right now. But there are specifically paid apps that you can buy as well. That also have its own features and built-in stuff. Alright, so backing out of here, and we kind of want to take a look at some of the menu features here. So we're at the very top, and that's going to be your, your main screen with all your apps and all your uh, HDMI ports. But if you come down to here, this is like a specialized version of what you watch the most or what you want viewed the most. That's pretty cool. Um, that's just a movie store by Fandango. It's just another one of your online streaming movie sites. Uh, you got news here, so that's kind of cool. You can search for specific movies or actors that are on right now or uh, viewable under any app that's installed on the system, so that's kind of neat. Now, okay, now down into the settings menu, this is where a lot of the stuff can be adjusted. So under network, you can set up your own Wi-Fi network and check the connection to see if it's still going. You have themes as well. I just used the main one, but if you jump in here, you can actually uh, select and then change it to a specific theme. So if we change it to this one, then your home screen and all the background stuff is going to look very different. So give it a second to load. All right, so now that's what it looks like there, almost like a carbon fiber theme. Now, one of the other cool features is you can download your own themes. There are more themes. I'll show you more of those in a second. But it'll actually do it. They'll give you specific themes based on the days and the holidays that are happening. So right now, today is Valentine's Day, and it has the Valentine's Day theme. Uh, Christmas, it had the Christmas theme and Thanksgiving. You know, it's going to have all those themes as it progresses through the year, which is pretty neat, and I, I really like that feature. Um, if you go down here and we get to more themes, you can actually download them. Now there's a lot of them that are actually paid, uh, so you can't quite get... There's a few that are free, but a lot of them are paid ones when you want to download your own. So it's pretty neat to be able to just change it however you feel that you want it. Uh, custom settings, yeah, that, I didn't really go too much into that. It says on the next system on the system will automatically switch to a featured theme which is available and automatically switch back when it expires. So what that does is when the Valentine's Day theme is available it's gonna view it at that specific time and then when Valentine's Day is over it's gonna go back to your original theme. Which I, I have it set up like that because it's kinda neat to turn it on on a holiday and see Christmas theme stuff or uh, Valentine's Day or Easter however whatever holiday you're on. Uh, screensaver, you can select what screensavers you want. You can tell it to wait a specific amount of time for the screensaver to come on. If you scroll over here, it'll give you a preview of what that screensaver looks like. Kind of a neat feature. <clears throat> you can select an analog clock to just be displayed on the screen during the screensaver portion. Alright, so back and out here. Let's get a little further down. we got accessibility. This is just more of your uh, captions. I don't ever have to really use this, but for the people that do, um, the, the, everything's here. You can select what kind of caption mode you want, the preferred language, the style, the audio guide that is either on or off, the speech rate, how quickly it says all the information, the volume of it, there's a shortcut for it to be able to be turned on and off. Pretty neat stuff here to have all those options. Now getting down into the picture settings, this will, out of the box, I didn't really have too many issues with this TV. I didn't feel like I had to adjust a whole heck of a lot when I first got it. I thought it was a little dark, so I brightened it up a little bit, turned it to the brighter setting here. Um, you can adjust it to tell it to do whatever you want. But it, it was set either at dark or normal when I got it, so I bumped it up just one notch, which I felt was a little bit brighter. Now this is the HDR notification. This TV does have HDR, and uh, I'll get more in depth of what I think of the HDR and how well it performs later in the video. But this will just tell you when an HDR source is being displayed. So uh, if it's on HDR, you'll actually know that it's on HDR. It'll tell you up in the uh, corner of the screen. From in here, you can actually individually set each HDMI port and what you have on those ports and adjust the picture qualities of all that stuff there. Uh, TV, TV inputs. So if you come in here, you can actually adjust what inputs are displayed on the home screen. So if you take a look here, these four are displayed on my home screen because those are the ones that I'm using. Now if you only have one HDMI source hooked up, you can actually delete 
it's not going to delete it from the TV, but it'll delete it from the home screen or remove it from the home screen. And uh, that's a pretty neat feature because then you don't have to have so much clutter on your main screen there with all your apps. And there's all these other ones here. Um, once again, like this one I don't ever use, so I don't have it being displayed. Now, one of the key features of this TV is it does 4K at 60 hertz. And what that means is if you have this hooked up to a PC or you game on it with your PlayStation 4 or your Xbox One uh, or your PC, you're going to have to come in here because out of the box, this TV does not have it set up to be 4K 60 hertz. You have to actually tell it to be 4K 60 in these menus. So each HDMI port is, is capable of 4K 60 hertz. And if you come over here, you have to actually enable HDMI 2.0 mode or select it to auto. I just put it right on HDMI 2.0 because then everything will be at its best performance. Uh, the difference is HDMI 1.4 to 2.0 is the 2.0 revision allows the 4K 60Hz and HDR sources where the 1.4 only allows no HDR and 4K at 30Hz. The big difference there is if you like once again back to your PC if you have your mouse hooked up to your PC it's going to be super laggy at 30Hz or 30 frames per second however you want to say it. So if you switch it over to here and get it to 60 hertz and everything is more fluid, everything is more snappy. So setting that up for your games, for your PlayStation, your Xbox, or your PC, that is a must. And I didn't really realize that at the beginning and I was wondering why I couldn't get 60 hertz out of it. You have to come in here and tell each HDMI, HDMI number one, number two, and number three, to be set up as HDMI 2.0. So if you come down here, this one will also be in 2.0 mode. <clears throat> Now I don't know if I have it set up for this one and this one here. Alright, so now we're back out and we go under audio. Uh, another really cool feature that I thought about this TV is it outputs in surround sound the DTS format. Now, not not too many people are really going to take advantage of this, but for the people that have home theater systems and the home theater receivers, this is actually a pretty neat feature. A lot of the newer home theater receivers will have HDMI input, so all you do is just run all your sources to the receiver and then run the receiver to the back of the TV and then you're done with the with your setup. But if you have an older home theater receiver that doesn't have the HDMI ports, then you need to use this right here, the SPDIF or optical output of the TV. This will output Dolby DTS to your home theater receiver via the SPDIF or optical output whatever you want to say to your receiver so if there is a blu-ray player hooked up to this and you want to get that surround sound feature it'll output in these formats I have it select to auto but it'll output in every one of these formats here and when you're watching a blu-ray and you want to watch it in surround sound you know what I mean <clears throat> it's gonna give it that much more clear and depth uh, the depth of field of the sound and it's just going to make it sound so much better. A lot of cheaper TVs, I mean this is a cheap TV, but a lot of cheaper TVs and more generic TVs are going to only Dolby are only going to output in Dolby Digital or maybe not even anything at all. But this one is pretty cool to have the DTS output via the optical out port. Um, also you can turn the menu volume up and down of, of the how loud it is in the menus and enable or disable the internal speakers. <clears throat> Coming back out, you can do uh, parental controls. I haven't really done too much with that, but you can set up that so you, your children can't view specific things. Um, there really isn't much going on in here. You can limit the amount of advertisements that are on your main screen at the Roku screen and whether to use the, the built-in microphone that's built into the smart remote um, to not allow it to access that. Kind of like they could be spying on you. I don't think they would, but you know, turning that off is going to negate all that from happening. Now if you come down to system here, it'll give you the information of the TV and then the time. Um, you can adjust your time and everything. Power, this is rather neat here. You can tell the TV to turn on <clears throat> to any specific um, screen. So right now I have it selected to turn on to the last used TV input. But you can tell it to power on to the home screen, to any HDMI port, or any input on the TV, which I thought was rather neat. Uh, in here, you can also adjust the power savings. Uh, you can tell it to reduce power after 15 minutes, which will put it in screensaver mode. 
or tell it to turn off every four hours at, at the four hour point. So if you leave and you forget to shut your TV off, you know it in four hours it's going to shut off and it's not going to be using up any any stuff there. Uh, that's just a system LED light when it, the TV is off. And you can reset the TV from here. Uh, fast start, this will uh, tell the TV to boot up really quick. Uh, I don't really use that feature, I just let it boot up normal. It doesn't take that long anyways normally. So This is just a built-in encryption of the HDMI sources. I haven't had any issues with that. Seems to be really just Blu-ray players that may have the problem with that. You can tell it what to select and what to play and what not to. Um, screen mirroring. Now this is rather neat. I use this a lot on this TV and what it allows you to do is mirror your mobile phone or your tablet or your laptop directly to the screen. So that means anything that's on your on your on your phone can be displayed on here. The exact screen of your phone will be displayed on here. Now I'm actually gonna go ahead and set this up real quick and I want to show you how this works and how like we're gonna do this right now live so not all phones have screen mirroring a lot of phones don't a lot of phones do so you gotta make sure your phone actually has screen mirroring but I know mine does it's an LG G4 and the phone works really really good with it so we'll see how well it works so I'm gonna turn on my mirror cast on my phone and it's gonna find the TV I'm gonna select it and now it's gonna try to connect to it so now anything that's on my phone so there it went right there. So starting video from the G4. And now my screen is identical to what my phone is. So if I go into my menus and my apps, then you'll see everything that's on my phone. Backing out, you know, it, it, it works exactly how you want it to work. So yeah, it's pretty cool how it can actually mirror exactly what's on there. So if you want to watch YouTube on here, when you get in YouTube, you can put it in landscape mode. Um, so it can be stretched across the entire screen. I'm just at the home page right now. So using the home page, it's only going to display like this. But if you have apps like Netflix or Hulu or whatever on your phone, you can get it to stretch out all the way. Just turn your phone diagonal. And then it will stretch it out all the way. But yeah, it's identical to it. The audio will also come through it as well. So everything from your phone will then play right through your TV or your um, directly off your phone. Pretty neat feature there in my opinion. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's disconnect. All right, now so we disconnected from it, and we're good to go. Now this is just telling you to always allow the devices to connect, or prompt you to ask if it will connect. And then these are always allowed devices, or always blocked devices, similar to Bluetooth. <coughs> uh, system update. You can tell it to search for updates from here. Occasionally there are a few, so keep checking from time to time. It actually, I, I believe, it automatically does it. Uh, no, I don't think so. You actually... Yes, right there it says that. Your TV checks for software and channel updates automatically per day. Alright. Advanced system settings. You can do a factory reset of, their, of the TV and all the uh, functionalities of the TV. You can reset all that. As far as your connection to uh, direct connect, like your screen mirroring, and external controls, like your network access. You can tell it to reset all those features. Alright, so yeah, that's kind of an overview of all the settings and what it looks like and everything, how everything works. So now I'm going to jump over to the PC form uh, format and what we're going to do is I'll show you how everything viewed is viewed on the computer and how well it displays the image and we'll do a little bit of gaming on the computer as well and show you some of those features in there. Alright, so here we are on the PC side of things. I have my gaming computer hooked up to the TV here. The difference with this TV compared to a lot of other ones, and this is why, in my opinion, why I justify the TV to be well worth the money. Sitting at a $350 price range and then on sale for $330, there is not a single TV, in my opinion, that can touch this TV. For the picture quality, um, and I'll get deeper into the picture quality here in a second, the smart features of the TV, um, and just the all-around performance of the TV at this price is phenomenal. I've had two other 4K TVs before. I had a Septri, which was a Walmart branded kind of TV I found at Walmart.com. Same size as this, but it was the most budget and basic TV I think I've ever owned. The colors were horrendous. The yellows looked brown, the reds looked pink, 
the greens were non-existent and the blues were okay on there but for the most part that was a I mean it, the TV worked it displayed an image it was in 4k it was in 60 Hertz but it just had no color accuracy whatsoever so I ended up getting rid of that one and then I picked up a JVC uh, 4k TV which I've done a review on this channel with and I will post a link down below to that review that I did with that that was about a year and a half ago maybe about a year ago now and I had that TV for a little while before I reviewed it uh, same as this one I've had this for a few months now I wanted to spend a little bit of time on it but that JVC TV compared to the Septri once again at the 49 inch was a much much better TV the picture quality on it was a heck of a lot better than the Septri was the colors were spot on you know the colors are accurate right out of the box the only thing with that TV is it didn't have HDR and it didn't have any smart features and it didn't have something called chroma now this TV has something called chroma 444 and I went into a little bit of a top a little bit of a conversation on the other review of that JVC TV on this as well chroma 444 is just a way for the TV to display text-based information and how it handles the colors on the screen and how it handles the text and when you'd have a uh, another a cheaper TV or a lower end TV this is a cheap TV but it has the chroma on it um, there's three different types of chroma 420 422 and 444 the 420 is a very scaled back and uh, compressed version of the text and colors that are on the screen so you get a, li a lot more jagged edged text when you're viewing on a PC. So if you were to open up the browser and take a look at some of this stuff here, you would see that the text would be very blurry and it would look kind of grainy and it would look, you know, very compressed. And if you are on a, a computer screen for long periods of time, that can continue to hurt your eyes and it, it puts strain on your eyes. And when you go jump up to the 420, and I'll show you examples here in a second on the on the browser here. I'll show you examples of what the 420, 422, and 444 look like. When you jump up to 420, it starts to smooth out the edges a little bit, makes the text look a little bit clearer, makes the colors look a little sharper. And then when you jump up to what uh, is on this TV, which is 444, then nothing nothing is, is is very compressed at all you can't see any compression artifacts you can't see any blurriness any graininess and any forms of awkward colors now <clears throat> once again I am recording on a capture card so you're not able to see this and uh, but you will be able to see this in the picture that I'm going to show you right about now here is a display image of 444 so if you take a look here and read all these lines on the next few images I'm going to show you are viewable all the way to the red and the blue. If you look at the red and the blue, you can easily see that the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. You can see it all the way down. And everything looks clean, clear, and precise. This is 444. Now if you jump down to 420, which is a lot of compression, I want you to take a look at the red and the blue boxes. See how everything looks a lot blurrier now? You can barely read the text that's written over it. That's because it has Chroma 420, which is a very compressed color and text format. And you can tell you can't even read what it says here. Now imagine browsing around on the internet on your PC or editing videos for YouTube or whatever you're doing, gaming even. Uh, the text on the screen isn't going to be as clear so you're going to notice a lot of jaggies and it's going to be pretty much unviewable as you can tell right here so now let's look at that 422 and you can tell the 422 you can pretty much almost read the red line without any problems there's some spots here like on this L that you can't read very well and then the blue just once again is pretty much unreadable it's a little bit better than the 420 but nowhere near what the 444 looks like so I'll jump back to that 444 whoops I zoomed in there let's back out of there and did it again alright so now take a look at this 444 look how clear all this is that's the difference with the chroma 
and this TV has the 444 and it is the cheapest price TV that you can find that I know of that has this option I don't know of any other TV at this price point that will display this kind of you know clear image on the text and the colors um, there are other TVs that do this obviously but they're much much more expensive okay so now you take a look here and here we are on Amazon and you're looking at some of the TVs this TV right here is a fantastic TV I seen this TV next to mine which is this one at Best Buy and I could notice a better colors more vivid picture on this TV um, where this where the TCL TV that I have right here falls short is in the HDR department yes it has HDR but the HDR clarity is horrendous as compared to the other ones. This one, I seen HDR and I seen HDR in this one, and this one blows it out of the water. The, the problem with the TCL, as far as HDR is concerned, is it doesn't get bright enough. You, what HDR does is it enhances the colors and brightens the screen. So it makes everything kind of very, very saturated, and it makes it look more vivid. Um, and when you were to watch it on the Sony compared to this one, night and day difference on how much better the 4k HDR looked now just plain old 4k image I thought it was pretty close the Sony did have a little bit of an advantage but it's also double almost you know more than double the price of the TCL so you're looking at it right now it's 330 on Amazon so that's a really good deal I mean yes it's a far superior TV but for the price this is by far I mean there there isn't much about the Sony that beats it other than the HDR there isn't much about that Sony that's better than this. Um, th that's really only the major comparison I did at Best Buy before I purchased mine was to look at the quality difference between those two and there's not much at all. Just the HDR. Now uh, you can take a look at like here's an LG option, the 6300. While it being a, a good TV it's got its LG's form of smart hub and um, it doesn't have any HDR functionality. Here you are at $100 more this is by far the cheapest TV that does the 444. I mean, yeah, there's other options down here, and we're looking at other TVs, but there are cheaper 4K TVs. I mean, here's a here's that Septri I was talking to you about that I had purchased a older model of this, and it was only like 280 bucks, you know, uh, at Walmart.com. It was a great TV for the price, but the colors were horrendous. I mean, it was one of the worst colored TVs I've ever seen. The TV functioned just fine. All TVs that I've had have functioned just fine. The Septri, the JVC, and now the TCL. It was the difference is is the the color quality and the clarity of the screen, and that's where the TCL, just in my opinion, is the best bang for the buck. And here we are at the review site. I'm gonna post this. Um, website down in the description below and this is a review on the TV and if we go and we look at some of the pros and cons of it you'll see very low input lag which is meant for gaming and what that does is it creates less lag between the inputs and the and the device that's hooked to it so you won't have very big input lag with your controller when you're playing on PlayStation or PC or anything like that um, also the low motion blur keeps fast moving content clear so when it's fast moving, like say you're watching NASCAR or any fast paced games, it won't get very blurry on you at all. It also has good contrast and blacks are pretty deep. Uh, the low side of it is it doesn't get very bright. That's obvious of the HDR performance. And uh, the picture quality degrades at an angle. Okay, so now here we are down to the input lag. These numbers right here in the milliseconds are comparable to a gaming monitor. This is 4K 60 Hertz is at 14.9 milliseconds input lag. I mean, that is amazing. I've never seen a TV that has that good of, at this price, that has that good of. Now, there's other TVs out there that have similar results. In this website, you can check any of these TVs. There's there's tons of TVs they do reviews on, and they show input lag on all those TVs. And you're looking at 14.9 milliseconds at 4K 60 Hertz. That is outrageously good. And it keeps that milliseconds all the way down. Now if you can tell here, um, as far as outside of gaming mode, there is a feature in the settings um, on the TV that will allow you to take gaming mode on and off. And if you come out of gaming mode, then that milliseconds rises as you can tell there. So you got the 4K 60 hertz outside gaming mode at 32.5. Uh, 1080p outside gaming mode 48.3 seconds. So that's much more like a standard TV would be. 
but when you put it in gaming mode, these numbers are phenomenal. Even in HDR, even when I'm displaying HDR content, it will display very, very well. Yeah, taking a look here, these are just other formats that it's allowed to uh, play in. It doesn't have 120 hertz, it's only a 60 hertz panel. So watching anything in 60 hertz is all you're going to get. Now when you're gaming, anything above 60 frames per second, you're not going to really be able to utilize. If you're running a game um, on your PC and it's, say, running 70, 80, 90 frames a second, you're not really seeing that frames per second difference because your panel is only able to refresh itself at 60 hertz. 60 hertz and 60 frames a second are the same thing. You're gonna, you're never gonna be able to utilize anything above 60 frames per second in gaming. Overall, it's a very good, uh, very good TV in my opinion. It does everything the way it should. It just, it, you're good with watching movies and sports and TV shows. Video games are fantastic on this. HDR content, not so much. And PC gaming, wow, phenomenal. With the uh, used as a PC gaming or just as a PC monitor for video editing. I can't really recommend this TV enough. The JVC that I had before this was also a very good TV at that price, but this is only $40 more than that JVC was, and you're getting the Chroma 444 and just a much better color palette, much better uh, all-around TV in my opinion, along with the smart features over that JVC. So here we are in the gaming portion, we're playing the game called The Crew. We're on the PC right now, and I got a graphics card in the PC. It's the GTX 950. It is a pretty low-end budget graphics card, but can still do 1080p 60 frames a second, which is what we're at right now. And if you look at the top left-hand corner, you'll see the frames per second counter as somebody pulls up right next to me and wants to race me. If you uh, if you look up there, we're at a locked 60 frames a second. That's because I have V-Sync on, and what that does is it stops any screen tearing from presenting itself. It, it keeps everything much more fluid and keeps everything running nice and smooth and as you can tell it's just pretty buttery smooth. There's really no problems at all with the gaming experience on PC. Now if you wanted to um, try to get a 60 frame per second experience on the consoles then what you're going to have to do is pick up a PlayStation 4 Pro or Xbox One X. The original version of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, this is not going to give you that 60 frames a second. It's not powerful enough to do so. This is the only way that you're going to get that 4K 60 frames a second is to try to jump up to the Xbox One X. And even then, you're really not getting a true 4K on those consoles. You're getting a downsampled version of it. It's going to be a lot better than the original PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, but you're still not getting that 4K 60 frames a second. Um, here we're only running 1080p just because my capture card can't quite do 4K capturing. So, But as far as gaming experience goes on this TV, it is uh, a very, very good experience when you use any kind of games on here. You can't really get much better for the price. At $350, there's $700 TVs that don't, in my opinion, keep up with this TV. So the final words on it is there isn't anything that this thing really does wrong. Uh, but the only thing you can gripe on it is the HDR. It really, it's not bright enough to be able to handle that. But other than that, as far as movies or streaming platform, you know, with the Roku, the fact that it can do uh, the 444 Chroma, but all that stuff right there just makes this TV a fantastic value for the money. So hopefully this video has helped you decide if you want to be able to pick this up. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section. And yeah, that will do it for the video, so hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and until next time, take care.